All right, guys, so this is going to be the video on uh, doing the layer uh, for the eyes, the mouth. So now the detail work is what we're gonna be working with um, for the animals. Uh, remember, we're all doing something different. So your approach might be a little bit different and that's okay. I'm just trying to give you guys the logistics of what it is that you're supposed to be applying to for highlights, midtones, and shadows. And then of course you apply it on your animal as it is for you because they're all different, okay? So at this point, like I said, we're gonna be starting off with some of the detail work. So I will zoom in um, because we're gonna be doing detail. If you look at my brushes here, I'm gonna try to use the ones that have the more fine point. So, um, you know, I'm probably gonna be using this one to add a color because I don't wanna go too small while I'm applying. I could even use something like this with a flat brush if I choose. Uh, for those of you guys that have that option. So these two would be more or less like uh, something with a tip and something with a flat um, edge. And then of course, I'd be using the zeros. If you see, that's the size there. The zeros for the fine, fine detail to get some of those little line strokes just because of the size we're working with. The larger the painting you do, the larger the brush you can use and still be able to get detail. So that really just uh, depends on you. But because of the size that I'm working with, I am going to be using uh, that size of brush, you know, and this one, you know, depending on the size uh, or the brand of brush, like this is a two and it's about the same size as this one is like if I put it right here, you can kind of see them both. Um, so even the two actually is a little bit smaller. So it really also depends on the brand that you're using, uh, but somewhere between a zero and a two should work when it comes to details. OK, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I will be talking about color as well as we're going over this, but because we're gonna be doing detail, I'm gonna to try to get as close as possible so you can see what I'm doing. Now, if you still needed to add more layers on your fur and so forth, depending on who you are painting, because some are doing dogs, some are doing cats, and then I have uh, like somebody doing, I believe I have one person with a pig, but that's they still have fur on them. And then I had one other person, I'm not sure if it was a submission of a lizard, but still, as far as color tones, it still works the same. Highlights, mid-tones, shadows, you would just probably be doing a different texture for the person who's doing that particular animal, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna start off with the one that's a little bit bigger. You see, this is my fine brush and this is my larger brush. So I'm gonna be working with this brush first. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna start working with the eyes. So I'm gonna zoom in on this. I don't recommend zooming in unless you're doing something like this as far as like detail work. If you're painting the other parts, this is where you would uh, make sure that you stay away like as far as completely zoomed out on the picture, okay? Just so you have a better idea of where you're going with that um, shape of the fur and so forth and the direction that it's moving. Now, again, we're working with the eyes. So that's why I blew it up. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure first, because if you notice when I was doing the fur, uh, you'll notice that there's like little patterns and so forth that should not be there because we do have that little background color. So I'm going to go ahead and since I still have wet paint over here, I'm going to take my black first because it's the darkest color. Okay, I am putting a little bit of water just because of how it's been sitting there over the weekend. I wanna make sure that it's gonna move as I paint. So I did uh, put my brush into the water first before I'm applying the black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I first outline all of this area to make sure that it's got a coat of paint in the back side before I start adding my details. So if I have any little areas that are a little bit off, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I paint that first because I'm gonna be painting uh, color on top of it. And even though the bottom is highlighted, I'm still going to add that just to clean up the contour and the line. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to make sure that I add a section of black first because it's my darkest color. And then I'm even going to put it right here where the tear duct is. Now, if I don't want to apply it all the way over here. And technically it is a little bit more round so I can get away with adding just a little bit more. But if you didn't want to add that shape to it because you're like, no, it doesn't go all the way out there. That should be fur. You can always get more of the purple and just apply it on there, okay? For those particular areas. But I know mine uh, is good like that. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Now, I, it's hard to see on the camera but I do have already marked off where the pupil is. So I'm gonna go ahead and add since I have the black already on my outer edge, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to apply the black where the pupil is. 
So, and then I see a tiny bit right here. And then I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work with, now originally, as far as the brown is concerned, um, I don't have brown. In order to make a brown, you would have to um, mix all the primary colors together. So I'm gonna just really quick show you that process. So I'll get a little bit of the red and I'm gonna go ahead and put it here off to the side. Then of course I wanna clean my brush off. So I'll get this and just wipe off the excess paint before I dip it into the water to clean it one more time, just to make sure that it's as clean as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my blue. Now, if it's just red and blue, then of course that's going to look more of like a purple. But in order to get a brown, I would have to get about the same amount that I added with the red and the blue. And then I would add my other primary color, which is yellow. So I'm gonna clean my brush off first because I'm gonna dip into the yellow. I wanna make sure I remove as much as possible. Dip it into the water, clean it one more time just to make sure it's as clean as I can get it before I grab some of the yellow. So I'm gonna grab the yellow and then I'm gonna mix it as well over here. And you should make a consistency of a brown. Now, if you added too much yellow, which in this case, I think I can probably go back a little bit more with the red because it looks, it's brown, but it has a hint of a gray tone to it. So I wanna add maybe just a little bit more red just to make it a little bit more of a chocolatey color. But if you're happy with the color you got, then leave it as is. I just wanted it just a little bit darker. Now, I could use this as a highlight. So maybe I might not mix all of it, but I'll take some red. So I'll get a little bit more and then maybe I can mix it off here to the side just to kind of darken it up slightly. So kind of like a half and half. And then I'm gonna put also a little bit more blue in this because it's kind of like an orangey red and I want it to be brown. So I'll get a little bit of blue. So I'm just going back and forth and applying until I get the color that I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna keep mixing, add a little bit more of the brown over here until I get to the brown that I want, which this is a good color right here. So now that I have those two colors that I can work with, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying it now to the eye. So I'm gonna first, since I have that dark color right now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna add some of that color here around where I see the iris of Lily. Now, if you accidentally go over where the white is supposed to be, that's okay. There, don't worry about that part of it because I can always go over it if I accidentally cover where some of the highlights supposed to be. Just like I'm going a little bit over the black right here because it was too thick of a line on the bottom, you can always go over acrylic. So that's the good part about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it there. I still have to do some more layering. There's still, it's not finished yet, but I just wanna make sure that I apply first the color where I see the color. So I'm gonna put some there. And then I'm also going to put, since I already have it, even though I don't have the black yet, I'm gonna go ahead and apply where the brown goes since it's already dirty with the brown. I should have originally done the black with the other eye, um, but you know, I wanted to show you that uh, mixture of the brown first. So I'll go ahead and I'll do the black after. So I'm just gonna apply. So if you do it backwards, it's okay. The reason why I say the black first is just because I wanted to make sure that I get, like I said, that outline correct. So I'm just gonna apply some of this brown where I see it. We're not finished with this brown because I'm gonna also apply some of the light brown as well. That's why I left that other color. But I'm gonna go ahead and just apply one more coat on the opposite side. So that way it's more solid. Let this dry a little bit and then do the same to this side. Just apply another coat. Two coats should do it, but if you wanna do a, a third coat, just because you're still seeing some of that background, the white background come through, then so be it. I'm gonna let it go one more time and then I'm just gonna apply one more coat right here on the very outside. 
Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off. That's what I'm doing right now off camera, but I'm just cleaning off my brush with the brown just because I am gonna get the black. Since I had already done the original eye, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the black here. Now I don't wanna to go too crazy with the shape on this one just because I noticed that I do still need some of that light color to come in here. So I don't wanna lose the shape. So instead of applying the black on that spot, I'm just gonna concentrate on the outline first. And then I'll go back with that purple because I still have some of that purple still available. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that purple for that. But I'm applying the black where I see the black first. I'm gonna put just a little bit more over here. So I'm gonna also clean my brush out again. Okay, now, like I said, I still have some of that purple available for me here that didn't dry up. So I'm gonna use the purple, the darker one that I had, and I'm gonna just apply a little bit right here on those highlights. It shouldn't be there just yet. I'm not concentrating on highlights. So I wanna make sure that the edges are completely filled with the purple that I originally had there. The only thing that should look like it's got um, highlight is just because those areas of the eye that are the super bright highlight, okay? So I'm gonna rinse off my brush really good because now that I have all of that color filled, I'm actually gonna switch brushes. And now I'm going to use my super fine tip brush. So I'm switching over to the zero point. If you have it, great. And if you don't, remember I showed you guys before, to do the, when you turn your, your brush like that on a surface, whether it's on your um, napkins or like if you have this over here, you can also roll the brush to get the fine points. So if you don't have the fine point available, that's something that you guys can do. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see my reference as well. So now that I kind of have that, now I'm gonna start working on details of the eye. So I'm gonna start paying attention to what I see. Now you do notice that there are highlights that do belong down here on the bottom. So wherever you see the highlight is where you're gonna add. Now, before I go straight with the white, it's not technically white. If I look at it, remember how I originally picked up the blue hues for the black? If I look at it, it's almost like a light blue. So remember I told you guys that I do have access to different kinds of blues. So instead of mixing the original blue, and this one's so brand new that I don't even have it open. So let me open it first. Okay, so now that I got it open, now this is a lighter blue than the blue I was originally working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use it as is. If I feel like, no, I want a little bit lighter, then I can always add a little bit of white to it. So I'm just gonna have, I, I just grabbed a tiny, tiny bit of white and that blue that I mixed it with is the blue that um, I mixed that particular one with. And, and that's just to kind of get first the highlight. So wherever you see the highlight is wherever you're gonna have that original stroke. And you can tell that that blue is lighter than the blue that's over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add first a strip of where I see it, which is like right here. So wherever you have your highlights on your dogs, because every single one is different, you're going to now pay attention to those areas and apply first those strokes. So I'm just coming in and putting the light blue. Now, I do want it to have a little bit of white, but just not too bright, which is why I'm starting with the light blue first. So I'm just gonna come in because if you notice on the picture, there's like a little tiny bit of texture on the side. So I'm just bringing it down slightly so it's not so crisp of a line. I also have another highlight right here where the tear duct starts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my light blue for that as well. 
And then I also have a highlight here on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and wherever I see the highlights is where I'm adding those little lines. So I'll do the same thing for the other eye before I continue with the white part of the highlight. So I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna say there's a highlight right here on this part of the eye. There's another white highlight or a light colored highlight right there. And then if I look at this part, there's also a highlight, same thing like the other eye where I have one that falls in the inside. It only goes up to there. And then I have another highlight underneath that. So I have to leave a little bit of black in between that. If you accidentally lose your black, that's the good thing about these detailed brushes because you can go back and just add the black if you have to, just that little stroke of color. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of texture there. There's a tiny highlight if I pay attention to it. So like if I zoom in, there's a tiny highlight right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just to kind of pop that out so that way you don't, cause it's very dark in that section with all the purple. So I'm gonna, remember we want to enhance. With pop art, you wanna enhance. So if I see something and I'm like, you know, maybe I should add it, maybe I shouldn't, then just go ahead and add a little bit. And if, it, if you don't like the way it looks, you can always go back and apply uh, more black or the purple on top if you wanna cover it. That's the good thing about acrylic is that you can just, it dries fast enough for you to go back and apply it, okay? So now that I have those tones and it kind of shows me like where those mid tones are, I'm even gonna add, cause you see how she has this other little one. I'm gonna add this also, might as well, since I have the color. Double check the other side. No, the other side doesn't have it. So I'm gonna leave that alone. So now what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna start adding the white highlight. So I'm not gonna clean my brush off just yet, just so that way I can get layers. That's the good thing about this is that you can do it upon layer upon layer. So I'm gonna leave my brush with the blue. All I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more white to it. So that way I get a variety of a blue. And then I'm gonna add another layer on top of wherever I added that highlight. So I'm just gonna go and put another layer, put another layer. I don't wanna cover all of that original blue. I wanna leave some of that blue behind underneath. And then the same thing right here. So I'm just gonna go and add just a little bit. This one that's on top, if you notice that this highlight was originally darker, like if I zoom in a little bit more. So I'm not gonna add the white on that one. I'm only gonna put the white on the one that looks a little brighter. Same thing for the opposite side. So if I come to this eye now, I'm only gonna put it down on the bottom, wherever I see the brightest of that tone. So put a little bit of that. You don't wanna cover all of it. You want some of that color to show through. And I'll put a little bit of this. I can probably put just a couple of little highlights here. I don't wanna do the whole line. Same thing for this one, just a couple of little dots just to kind of enhance those highlights. And then just a tiny bit here. I'm not gonna do it to the one on top because just like the other side, it's more, it's more dark. It's not, as, it's not as bright, okay? So now, even before I touch the white part of the highlight, I'm gonna, since it's already this light blue color, I'm gonna add first light blue for my highlight. So I'm gonna add a highlight right there. I'm gonna add some of this. I'm not gonna cover all of it. I'll leave some of it white where it's at the brightest and then some right there. And then I'll go to her other eye and then the same thing. I'm using that same light blue. So I'm gonna put first some light blue like this and then some light blue right here. And it doesn't look like it on camera, but I do in, in person, I see that light blue tone, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush one more time. So I'm dipping it in the water, removing the paint because it does have very little paint on there for it being a super detailed brush. Clean it one more time just to make sure it's super clean because my last step is gonna be to add the white on those sections. And I do need my brush as clean as possible for it to look white. So now I'm going to enhance this by making sure that some of this highlight is bright white. So I'm gonna add a couple of dots there. I'm probably gonna add one dot here. Same thing to this one. I'm gonna add it super bright here, super bright here. 
And then I'm gonna only pick one of the two. So whatever is the brightest. So this one's the brightest one, the one that's on top. I'm only going to add a white strip on this one only. And then I'm probably gonna add just a tiny little white highlight. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I want some of that light blue to show through. And then the same thing on the opposite side. I'm only gonna do it to the top. And then maybe just one dot. How I did three originally, I'm just gonna do one in white. Can you go more detailed on this? Yes. Remember I made another brown. So if I wanted to add to the brown some highlights, I would use this brush to do that because it's a little bit easier to control. So I have my light brown. I can add a little bit of light brown where I see that light brown. So if I want to go in there and just add a hint of light brown in there, same thing with the other side. So if I look at this eye, actually this one would show two of them. It would have a highlight right here. So I'd put a strip of light brown right here. And then it would have it like right here up against the highlight. So if you want to add additional layers of something that's a little bit light, lighter, you can do that. Okay. And that'll just create more depth and dimension. Um, you know, like in this case, I think this line came out a little bit too thick. So I can even use that light brown to kind of shorten that one and make it just a little bit thinner if I have to. Okay. So how detailed you're gonna go with the eyes, that just depends on you. If you don't wanna do it as detailed, you can put less, but of course, the more you put, the better it's gonna look as far as color wise. So if I zoom out on this, the next thing that I was gonna do that's gonna have uh, the high detail is gonna be the mouth. That's where it's gonna finally start actually looking like her. Now, the other thing I did wanna mention, I still have these colors available for me. So what I recommend, and this is something that's notorious to people who do pop art, like a thing that they use, is the colors that I just used, like the light blue, the white, not necessarily the brown because the brown was for the eyes itself, but how I did the highlights on that skin, I can use those same colors that I was just applying to highlight areas in the fur. So even before I go to the mouth, I'm gonna do some of those so that way I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so like for instance, in the black, we still need more highlights. I shouldn't just have that. So. On the next layer of fur, you would apply those same light blues that I did. You would apply now the textures of the fur that go on those areas. So where the blue is, I would use the light blue. So I would just go wherever the, the dark blue is that I used for the highlights, I can go ahead and just put a couple of strokes in the same direction that I was originally going with for the dark blue. So I would go ahead and just make sure that I take those stripes out. I'm putting it into the water just a little bit. If I notice that my paint is not moving, it's not flowing, and I'm getting too much texture, it's because you need a little bit of water in the paint. So now I can kind of move and I can see some of those strokes a little bit better. I'm just going to apply some highlights. And so I'm just using a more detailed brush, which will allow me to still see some of that dark blue show through. Same thing over here. On the nose, remember we originally did that texture. So if I wanna do that same light blue texture, it's kind of like pointillism at this point. So I'm just gonna add that highlight texture from the nose. So wherever I see that highlight, I'm just going in and just putting little dots of that light blue. And that's what will start to give your different textures of the fur versus the nose, which has a totally different texture on dogs and cats. So she also has a little bit of highlight. So at this time, I'm gonna use that same light blue to get the highlights on the bottom of the nostrils of the nose. So wherever you see those highlights, you just apply some of that color. And then the same thing over here. So I'm gonna put a couple of dots of that. 
And then also right here to distinguish that bottom part of the nose. And then I'm even going to use it for a couple of the furs on the this part of the nose with the white. So I'm just gonna add a few little stripes here just to kind of get that fur texture. So if you notice that the fur on the, and I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. On the fur on the nose, guys, you'll notice that there's real tiny little fur hairs right here. So what I'm doing is I'm just applying some of these textures so that way you, it looks like fur, okay? Even though I'm not putting too, too much, the smallest amount will help. So if I wanted to do the same thing, like going upwards here, I can also apply just a few here where that purple is going into the white. So now at this point, all I'm gonna use that light blue almost like as a highlight to the other areas. Same thing right here where the purple is going, uh, the white, anywhere the white is going into the purple, I can apply just a couple of strokes towards the direction they're supposed to be moving. And that'll kind of give the illusion of where the white is supposed to be while still having some kind of detail. Because the thing is that the majority of it is white, we're not gonna see a lot of detail. And we wanna give the illusion that that white is going into the other colors of fur, especially if they're multicolored like this, okay? So this is how you can still get detail onto the white without covering all of the white. I'm only gonna do it on certain little parts. I'm not gonna do it everywhere. And if you wanna outline, like some people, I've seen artists where like Chelsea does, she'll use that light blue to like actually physically outline. Um, so like, I'll show you a little piece right here. She'll go in and she uses that highlight color to outline the white and in between the colors. So if you wanna do a whole outline to it, you can, depending on how detailed you wanna get. I'm probably not gonna do it to all of it. I'll like for me, I would rather just put a couple of little fur strokes into where the definition is, but she will actually go in and do a whole entire outline. Uh, that's more indicative of pop art. So for those of you guys that want to apply um, a stronger line, that just means that that's more of a traditional pop art. So if you want it, that effect, go for it. I'm just gonna add a little bit just because mine at this point, yes, it's pop art and I can tell that it's pop art, but it has more of a, because of the, the definition of the fur that I'm applying, um, and the amount that I'm adding, it's a little bit more indicative of more like realistic pop art because of the, the detail that I'm applying to it. So if you don't wanna to put too, too much detail and you'd rather have more outlining, you can do that as well. That's the good thing about these is that they can be very different and still look, they can still look pretty good. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of the light blue here towards the edging, but more of like a first stroke, not so much an outline but you can do an outline if you choose instead of doing the first stroke. That's what I was saying. Like Chelsea, what she would have done is she would have actually gone in and she would have done this whole area as an actual outline. So depending on the look you want, you can choose uh, which one to do, okay? So I'm just gonna go and instead of doing an actual physical line, I'm just gonna do the first stroke. I'm not one, and this is like just me in general. When I did pop art in college, um, I just, I don't know, like the, I, for me, pop art is very difficult. I'd rather do something realistic than pop art just because I'm not good at keeping lines perfectly straight. I'm not good at, uh, you know, without transitioning, keeping things very flat in color. I'm somebody that loves transition. So for me, it was very difficult to, to actually do the process of pop art. Um, she loved it. You know, she was in the painting class. That's where I met her. So, you know, she's just one of those that will, you know, advance with that kind of technique. But I'm the type where I like stuff that's more realistic. So if you like things that are more realistic, you'd probably get away with the whole little strokes for the actual fur itself. Um, and if you're not realistic, you probably like the, the more linear look. You can kind of see now that I zoom out that I'm just doing like the little fur strokes. And then again, wherever the white is for me to the color, because that's her brown tone of fur. So for me, 
I need to make sure since I used the light blue that right here where this fur is going to meet that I have to apply a little bit of a light blue, blue stroke, excuse me, to make sure that I see which way in the direction that the fur is moving. So I apply a little bit here, a little bit here. Same thing here. I could probably even apply a little bit more light blue here. See, and my, my paint stopped moving, which means that if it's not moving with a clean stroke, I need to put more water in my brush. It needs to have more water in order to get that fine tip stroke. So I'll just apply the same colors. All I'm doing is just going to the white now, wherever the white meets the color is, you know, whatever the highlight tone that I'm using. So that's why I'm using it to apply some of those brush strokes. So I'm just gonna come in, put a few strokes here, put a few strokes here. The thinner the stroke, the better. You know, here on her chin also, she has a tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that as well to kind of show that she does have some white coming down this way. And towards the direction that they're going, because if you notice, her hair goes out. So I have to make sure that I take the strokes in that direction. And then I'll just, so on this part, I'm going to zoom out so you can see because that'll be the part that's over here down on the bottom. So right here where she has the white fur, so the strokes here are going to be indicative of that light blue color, even though her skin, not skin, but the fur, excuse me, is a white fur, I have to show movement somehow. Can I get white paint and do that? Yes, I can. But there's no point of me doing that when I left it white already to begin with. So why am I going to add white if I can just use the white of the canvas? And then at this point, all I have to do is at the very edge, follow the direction of the fur with the light blue. So I'm just going to go and add light blue on the very outer edge. So I'm just going to follow the direction. So that way it still looks like fur and it's not that flat line. I'm going to do the blue and I'm just going to follow it. It starts going in this direction. I'm going to add the light blue. And so I was pretty clean with these strokes. All I have to do is just add a little bit of light blue in there. And just follow the direction in my picture of the direction that the way that the fur is moving. See right here. If I, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that, so let me zoom that, you'll notice that right here, so if you look at it, do you see how it's not very clean? That's because I need water. So I did just add some water to my paint. So that way, as I go, I get that clean look. And I have to hold it up in order for you guys to see it because of the glare. But in order to, for you guys to, to be able to move the paint, in a good enough consistency to be able to concentrate and be able to get that fine tip, you need enough water on your brush, okay? So I'm just gonna continue putting a little bit of blue just on the outer edge, because I still want it to look white. That's how you'll get that white effect. So if I'm looking at it, she also has a couple of edges and I'm looking at the, I'm only gonna put a little bit here in the middle because her white hair also follows that edge. So wherever the edge of the white hair is, is where I'm putting the blue. So right here, I also need some blue. Can I do a full outline? Yes, like I told you guys, uh, my friend, the pop artist that lives on the island, Chelsea Fedigan, she does a lot of that outlining. So she'll literally like on this section as an example, the way that I did this, She'll just go and she'll outline the whole thing with an actual outline. But I like the more realistic um, pop art approach. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do it as if it were brush strokes like this. But can you do more of an outline look? Yeah, that's gonna be your choice on what you wanna do for yours. I find this easier, honestly, 
but because that's the style that I paint. For those of you guys that like to paint with more line, then you're probably gonna find the other way easier. So I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of light blue down here on the bottom, just because if I'm looking at what this is down here, it's the black that's starting to turn into white down here on the bottom. So I'm still gonna add a little bit of light blue at the bottom of this purple here. And then also when you guys mimic colors like that around, it actually helps to create more dimension and more layers. So automatically it's just gonna look better. And then I'll probably also put a little bit of light blue down here on the bottom where the white meets this other color. So the way that I did the light blue, and honestly, this might actually need another coat, guys, just looking at it and just because of that fine line that's here. So I would go back and just wherever I see that line definition, just make sure I add a little bit more of that light blue, just a second layer, just to make sure that it gets, you don't see that hard break of a line. Um, but I didn't even add some up here. So see, I'm still lacking some on the blue. So go make sure you go back and add on all of those spots. I think that might be the only thing with the dark blue and then maybe just a couple here where she has her little spot on her nose and then just a few more little ones here. So I just need to make sure that I go on all the layers of wh whatever's gonna be close to the white has to have a little bit of layer of the light blue. So like right here too. In the direction that the fur was originally moving. That's very important, okay? So now that I kind of have that going on, which is the mo the majority of it, I could probably still go back and maybe add a couple of stripes like right here because like I didn't touch light blue up against. So you can always go back since I have that color, I can always go back and touch up. Um, I would also add just to kind of clean it up uh, and I can either do this with a light blue or I still need to add like a light purple in between here, which I'm gonna do right now uh, is add the outline on the black. Now, because I did the, this as an outline for the white, I'm actually, whatever I use for the purple is what I'm gonna use for the outline on the black. So I'm gonna switch colors now and I'm gonna get, remember I told you guys that this one is gloss, but since I have it and I don't ever get a chance to use these colors or I haven't had a chance to at least, let me open it guys because it's brand new. So I do have to open, oops. <laughs> There goes the tip of my paintbrush, but that's okay. Still works. So let me just open it real fast. Because it's like I said, it's a brand new bottle. So I'm gonna just pick another one of these. This one's already dry, so I'm gonna just use that. So I'm gonna have that light purple there. Um, remember it's gloss. So if you don't want it to be super glossy, uh, you can either get away with putting some of the white matte paint so I can either mix it unless you want the gloss look because you know eventually you are going to spray it with a gloss spray. So if you guys are gonna do that gloss spray, which I will show you on camera which uh, one it is um, once I stop the recording, of course, just because I wanna make sure that I don't make the video too long and I have to go find it. So those of you guys that are interested in the gloss spray, I'll go ahead and I'll show it to you after the fact if you wanna stay for a little bit. Um, and then just in case, okay? But if you just don't really uh, wanna get the, the gloss spray just because it's another thing you have to go purchase, then you can mix it with a little bit of white if uh, those of you guys that only have the gloss version of that color, okay? So now that I have the light purple, I'm just gonna go and add same thing that I did with the light blue, stick to the same direction. I'm just gonna add a few little strokes of the light purple on top of the dark purple. So remember layers, we're thinking layers. Wherever I have that color, I'm just gonna add a few of those strokes. And I told you guys that because I used the light blue on the white, I'm gonna use the light purple 
for my edge on the black. And that's the way that I'm gonna make sure that that very edge is nice and clean, okay? Now, if you apply it and you're not happy with it, you're like, no, I actually liked it with the black. I don't like that she's adding the light. You know, I like it, but if you don't for you, then try it just a little bit. And if you don't like it, you're like, nope, I'm not gonna like this effect. Then you just get the black and paint right over it again, okay? So I'm gonna continue with my light color just because I'm gonna add some highlights to it. So first on these little areas, I've already noticed that it needs more water. So the moment that your, your stuff is not moving and you're not able to get those clean lines, get a little bit of water in it, okay? The more layers you add, the more it's just going to start becoming more uh, to life as far as the picture itself. And honestly, with pop art, just in general, guys, you want to, um, what's the word? Not overdo it. The word that I'm looking for is more like uh, to exaggerate, like exaggerate the areas. If you see that it's like a highlighted color, exaggerate the highlights. You know, that's what's going to make it really pop and just kind of give it that pop art look. Some people want it a little bit more muted and that's okay. It's your preference. That's why I'm not making it mandatory to do certain things. If you'd rather do outlines rather than the fur look, then do the outline look. It's whatever's easier for you. I'm even going to add just a few little in here. So you can see how like compared to the actual picture itself of how bright she looks. That's what I was going for uh, with the original tone, you know, compared to her original tone. I wanted it to exaggerate those particular areas. So if you don't want to exaggerate, you want to go exact, then go for it. You know, I just want to make sure that I enhance her fur. So I know that I'm going to add more strokes of patterns of fur uh, versus what I see in the picture. And the cleaner you are with your strokes, the better it's going to look. So try to take your time when you're applying your, your little fur, direct, the direction, especially that it's moving. Like pay attention to it. See, like I'm exaggerating the highlights here, but that's because that's the look that I want. And the good thing is, is that if you apply it, you're like, no, I don't like it. I liked it the other way. Well, it's acrylic. Let it dry a little bit and just go back over it with the other the other color. I know I need more water because my my paint is not moving the way it should. So if you're applying the paint and you feel it difficult, like it's not moving the way you want it to move, then it's probably because you need more water in the paint. Now, when you apply it, like if you look at mine right here, it looks a little bit brighter. It's actually going to lighten up because it's got water in it. It will uh, darken slightly as it dries. So just wherever I have those highlighted purple parts, like the black part, I'm just gonna go in with that light purple just to put a few strokes, just to enhance the highlights.
Now I'm still missing the mouth at this point, so we're not done yet. So if you already did your mouth and let's say I'm going over some of these uh, with you and you're like, oh man, I didn't do it like that. It's acrylic, so you can always go over it again if you have to, okay? Uh, but as far as for the mouth, uh, and I think just because I'm still using the purple, let me just apply it really quick to this because I didn't put highlights here. So I'm just gonna, just because my, my paintbrush is already dirty. So let me just add a few little strokes on where it still needs it. And then, like I said, at this point, I'm just really missing the inside of her mouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on that part so you can see what to do for yours. And again, if you already did yours, cause you're like, I kind of understand what she's talking about, you know, as far as applying some of those textures and so forth. And then you watch me do it and you're like, oh, I didn't do it like that. It's acrylic, so you can always paint over it, okay? So for the tongue itself, um, I am going to go ahead and try to stick to the same colors. So I'm not going to change it. If I were to change it, I think the only other color that I could get away with doing for it to still look like her tongue would be purples. But uh, I do want to kind of stay true to the color. So I'm going to just use and just to reuse some of the color, that orangey color that I originally had, just because it's already a lightened version. I'm going to grab some of that. I'm going to actually put it. So I'll do this on camera so you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some here. Now the red, I'm not gonna be using too much more and I have a lot here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just apply it. So I'm gonna get make it just a little bit more red rather than orange. Make sure I mix it up really, really well. Just because it was a little too orange. I still want it red, but I kind of like that kind of That, that tone that originally it was. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush because I am gonna dip it into my white and there's a chance I might use my white again. So let me get some of the white. And again, I'm gonna mix it here from the side so that I mix it slowly into the color that I want to get that pink. So it's almost like a salmon color because it wasn't true red, it was more of an orange, which is, that's what I was going for. I didn't want it a bright pink. I want it more like salmon. Okay, so now that I have the color that I'm looking for, now I'm gonna start applying it to the tongue. So this is gonna be my first layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply it as I see it. So I'm gonna try my best to stay inside that contour line. So right here where it meets the blue, since I already applied the blue, all I'm gonna do is a backward motion into the parts. So that way it still looks like fur. So here I don't have to worry too much because I'm just making it solid. But as I get to the blue, I'm gonna start going backwards like that. So I'm gonna take the way I was doing the strokes in this direction, now I'm going up into it. And that's how I can kind of get the little bit of fur movement. So let me just fill this in because I know this is gonna be all with this color for the base coat. And then the only part I have to really concentrate of course is the right at the edge of the fur. And again, I'm going in backwards. So make sure that your contours are nice and clean. So right here, the edge is really what I wanna apply first. Concentrate on getting that straight line and then you can fill in the rest of it.
So now that I have that uh, color in there, what I'm gonna end up doing now is paying attention to where I have my shadow mark. Uh, and I'm actually gonna use first, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of red. So that darker, that darker color first. I am gonna apply some purples to it, but I wanna get red first, just in case if I go a little bit off, it'll look almost like a middle color. So I'm just gonna come in. I know this is my shadowed area, so I'm gonna put this color first, just as a guide. See, it kind of comes out this way, that little flesh look. There are some highlights that do belong in there, but I'm not getting that yet. Right now, I'm just concentrating on where my shadow is. And then it kind of does this shape right here. So now that I have, uh, you know, there's probably like another one that I can put just right here, because if you notice right here, there's a little bit of a shadow. So wherever you see the shadow work, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of red there first. So now that I have that, now I'm gonna get a little bit of my purple and I'm gonna use my purple as the next coat on top. So that way when it mixes, it looks a little bit darker of a tone. And as it dries, remember we're going backwards into the white. As it dries, that's where it'll get that little fleshy color because it's a mixture of the colors. This is why I apply red first because if the purple mixes into that, then it's gonna look more like that flesh tone. So I'm just gonna apply a layer of that purple on there while it's wet to try to move quickly. Remember, if it dries, you can always go ahead and just add another layer on top. And then I'll put a little bit also over here for the shadow. So it's got shadow here. I'm gonna take this up just a little bit and then just a layer right here. So I'm gonna get one more of the purple just to deepen the color right here in the middle. And that's how you get that little transition. So wherever you see the darkest point, which would be right here and right here, I'm just gonna apply another layer on there. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can kind of start to see it. Now, can I go deeper than the color? Yes, but I'm gonna let it dry just a tiny bit. So while it's drying, I'm gonna start with the line work. So I'm gonna clean my brush off. I'm gonna take a little bit of white for the highlight and then a tiny bit of that salmon color but we're talking about just a tiny bit it's mostly white and then i'm going to do the highlight so i'm going to go ahead and make sure that this part of the tongue has highlight so i'm going to add a simple layer here i'm just kind of like touching it you know as far as think of it like pointillism but I'm rubbing it at the same time. So I'm applying highlight and just kind of rubbing it, but more like pointillism where I'm just kind of stroking it slightly because this is not the super white highlight yet. Right now we're just getting some of those areas like this part of the tongue sits on top of that tooth. So I have to make sure that I give it that highlight. And then I can start with the outlining. So outlining, I just wanna go with a deeper color. So I'm gonna get that deep, I have a deep purple already that hadn't dried from the last time that we were working, which is the same that I was applying like when I was doing this for the eye. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that for the outlining. So on her tongue, she has a little bit of markings that are like the little wrinkles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that purple to do some of this line work. So it's right here, right here. I see a deep line here. She has a little dimple like right there. And then I'm gonna even use that dark color. So this is, in this case, I am gonna use it to outline her tongue just to kind of give it that, that deep straight line. Remember that if it's not moving for you, it's kind of hard to keep a straight line. It's because you need more water in your paint. So I'm just gonna to touch the water really quick so I can make sure that that purple is going to move if the if the paint has been sitting there for too long guys then that's where you'll come into that problem so you do need water to get that lot that straight movement so i'm also going to outline it here where it sits on the the tooth and then i'm going to outline it right here So 
gonna put a little bit of shadow work right here by just putting some of those little strokes where the shadow work is. I'm cleaning my brush because now I'm going to make sure that I use the white for the highlight. And then I'm gonna take white, so this is just white and hit the highlights where I see on the tongue. So right here, right here, there's another highlight like right here. And that's what's gonna really make it look like, see those little dots right here? That's what's really gonna make it look like a tongue because the dog's tongues are very wet. And so when you have those bright highlights, then uh, you need to apply them. So that way it looks like your dog. If you have a cat and you don't see that because usually cat's tongues are more uh, rough, um, then don't apply it. So it's just wherever you see it. I'm gonna put just a few little dots right here just because I do see a little bit more of a highlight on the side of the mouth. Now for the teeth, we do want to add a little bit of color, not too, too much, because we don't want to make them look like they're like yellow teeth or anything, but I do want to apply some of those shadows. I'm actually going to, just like we did with the white fur, stick to the light blue. I'm going to go ahead and stick to the light blue as well. So I'm picking up a little bit of light blue for the teeth, and I'm just going to apply wherever I see the shadow. So the teeth are going to have a little bit of line work on this section. This one happens on this side of the tooth. So I'm gonna put it where I see the shadow. She also has shadow on each one of these teeth here. So I'm just gonna apply it here, here, here. So I'm just putting a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom, a little bit of the top, a little bit on the bottom. And then I do wanna take a bright white for the teeth on wherever the super bright highlights are. So I'm gonna pick up white only and just apply it where I see the super bright highlights. So if you worked on the mouth and the highlights on the fur and the eyes for today, um, that's good. If you didn't finish, it's okay because on Wednesday, I'm going to give you guys as a uh, makeup day. So if for those of you guys that get a chance to come in on Wednesday, uh, you know, this is what we're going to be doing is just taking a look at it and saying, where can I add a little bit more if I need to highlight, if I need to outline, you know, like in my case, I would probably put just a little tiny bit more of the light blue, just a tiny bit coming in just so I can see the movement of the fur a little bit better. But that's really um, what we're gonna be working on on Wednesday is just fixing up the line and so forth. I will record uh, so to post for those of you guys that aren't gonna be here for um, testing. So if you're testing at that point, don't uh, worry because I will post the video of what, you know, how much we get a chance to do. If I'm gonna add- Ma'am, sorry to bother you. Uh, what test is that? I'll go over that right now, Eric. Let me just finish okay. the last one, okay? So on this part, the only thing I would add last for those of you guys um, is just the highlight on the nose for the white because I did notice that I didn't uh, add. So she has like a bright highlight like right here. She has another one like maybe right here and then uh, probably right here on this part of the nostril just because I see the bright highlight right there, okay? So, um, you know, I would just make sure that you go back and forth and double check to see if you guys see any other bright highlights and add the white to it. Uh, and then, of course, the same technique that we've been doing from now, like as far as the shadows, the mid-tones and so forth like that, you guys can apply it to it. So if I zoom out, you know, technically, like I said, I'm still going to add a couple of little details. Like you see how I, I messed up on that background. I see some white coming through. If I don't see that on her, I'll go back and I'll add a few things, but that's just being real nitpicky at that point. So that'll be Wednesday is just going to be touch up day. Okay. So I'm going to end the video there.